So today we're going to dive into how to work with your spouse and actually have your relationship get better versus wanting to kill each other all the time. There was a point in our business in Superior Restoration where Skylar and I had a consultant and we made a rule that I wasn't allowed to talk to Skylar about certain issues. I would tell the consultant and then the consultant would tell Skylar because there was so much friction in our relationship. So we've had Superior Restoration almost 13 years and we started it from the ground up together. Like I started by knocking on doors to get carpet cleaning jobs in the very beginning. And it's grown to almost an $11 million company. And the company now runs on its own. But while we were working together, there were some very critical things that we needed mindsets I needed to have, and it would have saved us a lot of heartache. Um, so in the way that I managed, I managed from fear. Skylar manages from faith. And so you can just naturally go to venture that with fear. I was very concerned with the numbers, the details, our um, liabilities, the bottom line, very narrow focus. And he was vision. How are we going to grow this thing? How are we going to do it? And oftentimes I found myself trying to get him to be more like me. Hey, you need to look at these numbers. This is a liability. You need to be stressed out. You need to show up like me. And... It wouldn't have served us if he would have done that. Skylar's great at putting people around himself that have the skill sets that he doesn't have or the ones that don't give him the most return on his investment of time. And so I want you to think about you and your relationship with your spouse and the business. Where do you operate out of fear? Right? What control are you keeping that you don't necessarily need to keep because of fear? Like Skylar was able to get out of the business two whole years before I was, where he would come in a couple of days a week, he would have KPIs to run the business, and the management team was running the company. I was in the day-to-day -day things for two whole years longer because unknowingly I was driven by fear, and I didn't want to let it go. I didn't want to delegate it. I felt that I was the one that had to do it. So when you take a look at you and your business, right, and your skill sets and your strengths, are you doing things out of fear and holding on to some things out of fear? Or are there some things that you could be delegating? And if you do it out of fear, are you trying to change your spouse to be like you and operate like you? The whole reason why we needed a consultant in the beginning was because we had one of our managers that we completely disagreed on. And anytime this person's name got brought up, it created massive tension with us. And this person fell under Skylar's leadership. And even though he was under Skylar's leadership, I felt like I had a say in that. And so eventually what became kind of an unsaid rule for us was if I wasn't going to solve the problem and take on the stress and run that department in our company, then I gave up my right to have a say in that. Because I spoke my piece, I shared my thoughts, I gave my insight, and if he chose to do it or not, that was up to him. But the old me said, hey, I shared my thoughts. I shared my piece. I gave my insight. And I expect you to do it like I said to do it. And so part of me, but that was fear, right? Fear of like, okay, if this continues, then this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. And eventually we're going to be out of business. And so I had to set boundaries for myself, right? Are you, do, are you and your husband clear on each other's lanes like do you have clear defined roles and do you stay in those roles or do you intermix and try and like uh, have each other do everything your way because when you're trying to get your spouse to run the business like you would and they have a different personality it's not going to go well it's going to end up in chaos between the two of you guys because each one of you has your personality styles right i used to say skylar and i are a lot alike I used to think that we were very similar. Like I used to think we were like a lot of the same person because we were both high Ds and the disc profile. If you know that, we're both driver personalities. However, when it comes to execution, we're dramatically different. I will go 100% to 110% and follow through all the way. And Skylar gets about 80 or 90% and that's good enough most of the time because it's gotten to where he can. Because if he bogged himself down with the details, then it would cloud his vision, right? If he's in the muck in the details, it's hard for him to be a visionary. 
And so that's why it was a perfect combination for us to work together when we stopped resisting how each other were and stayed in our lanes. So the rule that I came up with for myself to not cause stress for me was that if I wasn't going to solve it, then I'm not going to be the one to deal with it. So we also had to set conversations, boundaries around conversations. Oftentimes, it's easy if you're in business with your spouse to be talking about everything all the time, right? To say, oh, this isn't working and this isn't working. And if you have a driver type personality, which you more than likely do if you run a business, then you're ready to solve things all the time. So when you hear your spouse saying, hey, this is the challenge, Most people, if you have that personality, will jump in and be like, hey, well, I can solve it. You know, what are we going to do about it? And then you want them to take your advice and do something about it. So often I would only ask for the things that were going right. I wanted to know the ways they were winning because there's always going to be challenges. And I get stressed out really easily where Skylar doesn't. Right. So I had to set boundaries for myself so that I could manage my state and let him do what he does best, which was leading. But that took many, many years of us understanding our profiles and being willing to accept the other person for how they were. Because if you're constantly trying to change your spouse, not only in business, but in marriage, you're going to be met with a lot of resistance, a lot of frustration, and a lot of anger. So speaking about how it doesn't work to solve in business and at home, how do you do at home? How do you separate your business life from your home life? Oftentimes we work with couples at Rise Up Kings and Rise Up Queens that run businesses, right? And their business is often their most exciting thing. For some of them, it is their additional child. So how do you make sure you have interests outside of the home that you can talk to your spouse about, right? And so one of the things that Rise Up Queens, I teach the wives to do is how do they take care of themselves? Right? How do they nurture them so that they can walk into the relationship full and overflowing? Right? Do they have community around them? Are they doing self-care? Are they taking care of themselves? Are they growing? And then same thing with the men. Right? Do they have interests outside of work? Are you guys leading a balanced life so that you have more to talk about than work? And some of you might say, well, I choose to work 18 hours a day and for that to be my primary focus. And so I would just question, like, how do you balance that out with your spouse so that she doesn't feel that everything is always about work? One of the things that we've loved to incorporate, like we have the little Amazon date box, right? Or there's um, little scratch off boxes for dates. And we have these date cards, or if we forget the cards, then I, we look up questions. We stay curious about each other. And we don't assume that we know who the other person is. Because if you're going to be in business with someone and be with them all the time, you eventually start to get to this place of, oh, I know this person. I know how they're going to react. I know them well. And we stop being curious in marriage. We stop being like wondering, like we stop wondering about our spouse and how they're changing and how they're shifting. And so we use questions And then we also use our growth. Like we love to share how we're growing. We both are big readers and we listen to a lot of books. And so we share new things as they're occurring for us. So is there a part of your guys' marriage, if you're running the business together, where you need to spark some new conversations? Um, And if there is, maybe I would challenge you to explore that with your spouse. I want to end the video talking about friction, right? How do you deal with that friction? If you're married and then you're doing business together and that friction doesn't ever stop, right? It'd be easy to blame the other person and say, okay, well, when this person changes, then the friction will stop. But what if it wasn't about them shifting? Was there, is there something that you could do that could shift it? After one of the last events that Skylar did, he came back and he said, hey, I'd love to know how I occur for you as a husband. Like, that's an interesting question. How do I occur for you as a husband? What are the experiential words you would use for me as a husband? And I was kind of in a pissy mood when he asked that. I was like, I don't want to answer you. You tell me how I occur for you. And um, true to form, um, he he said I was um, hard to deal with sometimes. And he, he named off like three things. And part of me wanted to totally push back. But then I'm like, you know what? That's true. That is, like, I can be difficult, right? I can be this. And then I shared how he occurred to me. But 
in that conversation, he he wanted to see like if there's an employee that you think is difficult, let's say, right? We all know of an employee that's difficult. Already when you walk into interactions with that employee that you think is difficult, you posture yourself in a certain way. You're ready to respond in a certain way. You're ready to be a certain way with them. Well, the same thing happens in our marriages. We make up this assumption or this experience of who our spouse is. And when we're so solid on what that experience is and we're not open to seeing anything new, it's hard to shift the relationship. So if there's friction in your marriage right now because of things that happen in business or just because there's friction, I would challenge you to think through, how do I categorize? How does my husband, how does my wife, how do they occur to me? Because when they occur to me this way, automatically I'm going to act this way, right? So if there's a difficult employee, you're automatically maybe going to be more rigid with them or more defensive or more on the lookout with them. If your spouse, if you think they're, they don't ever show up or they don't ever follow through, automatically you're not going to ask them for things. You're going to show up differently with them. You're not going to give of yourself because you're, you're not certain if you're going to give it back. So how does your spouse occur to you? And is it true? Right? Because if your spouse, if you think you can't rely on your spouse, would if 100 people stood here that knew them, would they say the same thing about them? So is it really true or is that how they're occurring to you? And could you be playing a part in that? I know you don't want to hear like, what's your responsibility, right? But it takes two to make a relationship work. So if there's friction, I challenge you to just check in. Hmm, how could they be occurring to me? And how am I showing up when I think that I know exactly who they are and how they're going to respond? So lastly, I want to challenge you with getting on date nights. It is so important if you run a business together and you're together all the time to mix it up sometimes. At one point, um, I would go on date nights in Uggs and sweatpants because I was just so tired and so exhausted all the time. And um, Skylar very kindly um, shared that that wasn't sexy and that he wanted to keep it spicy in our marriage. He wanted to keep it new in our marriage and wanted date nights to be something that were special. Since we spent so much time together, he wanted that time to be special. So we made a rule that there's no Uggs and no sweatpants allowed on date nights. How can you step up your game in your marriage? If you're together every day, right? If you're together every day. Like, are you setting aside quarterly getaways to be with each other and get out of your city, get out of your business area, get out of where you normally are? How do you carve newness into the routine of being together all the time? So just challenge you to keep it fresh and try new things, right? And you're doing life with the person that you love. So how can you make it the best that it can possibly be? So if you're not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button for more great videos on intimacy, marriage, femininity, and connection.